Hey everybody, uh, this is series one, episode one. Uh, it's the first step in our, okay, it's the second step in our journey. There is an episode zero. If you haven't watched it, it is linked down below in the description. Really lays out what I'm hoping to accomplish with these uh, videos and provides a nice foundation to build on. And uh, series one, we are starting with the most fundamental unit of communication, which is the sentence. We're going to talk about uh, lots of things in this series related to sentences, but not everything. Got to save some of that stuff for later. But we will answer the most important question about sentences right after the theme song. Oh, sorry, we're back. Uh, is this a sentence? That's the most fundamental question you can ask about a sentence. And because the sentence is the most fundamental unit of communication, is this a sentence is kind of fundamentalism squared. The problem is, is this a sentence is kind of a gray question. It's not a yes or no question like, is this a banana? Uh, I think everybody in the world agrees on what a banana is. Delicious. On the other hand, there are so many different definitions of what a sentence is. I mean, there's a very technical definition that comes out of linguistics. There's uh, the definition that was in my grammar book back when I was your age. There's the definition that your English teacher has, if your English teacher is not me. And it's very important that you know what that definition is, because I don't actually want you to fail your class. But speaking as the kind of English teacher that I am, and more importantly, speaking as a writer, to me, the best definition of a sentence goes like this. A sentence expresses a complete thought in context. Now, you have probably heard the first part of that definition. A sentence expresses a complete thought. This is not novel. This is not new. That's the definition that's been going around English classes since time immemorial. But it's the in-context part that really interests me. And to see how that works, let's start with two words. These two words. The mall. Now it's pretty clear that despite the giant sign back there that says food court, those two words by themselves, not a complete sentence. There's not enough context there in order for it to be a complete thought. But Imagine that it's part of a larger conversation, something, you know, two students might be talking and might go kind of like this. Hey bro, where'd you get those fly kicks? The mall. Sweet. So there, in that context, even though it's only two words long, the mall expresses a complete thought. There is no reason for student number two to say something like this. Well, friend, I purchased these fly kicks from a fine retail establishment located within the confines of the mall. And, and in reply, student number one doesn't have to go with something like this. I find that information you have just passed on to me to be sweet, and I shall use that information to inform my future decision making. Right? All of that is just kind of dumb and unnecessary. Now, it is time for a hashtag warning. There are some people who would mark those as fragments because, I mean, technically, they are. To me, as an English teacher, as a writer, the context is enough. Let's imagine those same two students are having a different conversation, though. And let's see how this goes. It's something like this. Hey, bro, did you study for tomorrow's killer biology quiz? No, no. Okay, the dramatic music might have been a little much, but that blank stare that student number one was giving to student number two, that's actually an answer to the question, is this a sentence? It's what is called the stare test. If you say your thing, and in context it does not express a complete thought, then you don't have a sentence. In other words, if you say the thing, and they just stare at you, you're looking at a fragment. There's another test that's very similar. It's called the yes, no question test. K 
Can you add a word or rearrange the words in your sentence a little bit to turn it into a yes or no question? Uh, for example, our earlier two-word example of the mall, uh, we could add the word is, and we'd get something like, is the mall? And the answer, of course, is no. No, 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 you poor benighted soul. You could do the same with longer stretches of words. Let's take this actual complete sentence. I study for the biology quiz tomorrow. See, we can make that into a question very easily. Did I study for the biology quiz tomorrow? Yes. And the moral of the story is always study. But if we added a word to the beginning of that complete sentence about studying, we could run into some trouble. So listen to this. Because I studied for the biology quiz tomorrow. That doesn't make sense if we tried to turn it into a question. We get something like, did because I studied for the vocabulary quiz tomorrow? And, and that's just not a thing anybody would say. There's a third test that you can use as well. It's called the tag test. You add a couple of words at the end of the sentence, uh, sort of tag that sentence, not like the graffiti tag, but you would say something like, uh, doesn't it, or won't you? Uh, let's go back to our friend uh, who really appreciates the mall. Uh, he would say something like this. The mall, wasn't it? Does, I don't, like, I don't even, do you even English, bro? That's what I, the tag test definitely does not help us with the mall. But let's see what the tag test does to another sentence. I studied for the biology quiz today, didn't I? Now that is a solid sentence. You don't even need the context to understand the complete thought. Now that's not to say that context isn't important. I think we've established that context is important and I'm not gonna get too deep into the weeds here about things like code switching or uh, regional variations in what's acceptable English and what isn't. I just want you to be aware that the context is important. What you write in a text to your friends is very different from what you would write in a text to your parents, is very different from the way you would write a paper that you turn into your science teacher because you didn't study for that quiz and you failed. So let's say you've done these tests, okay? You've done the stare test, you've done the tag test, you've done the yes or no question test, and you are pretty certain that you've got a fragment on your hands. How can you fix it? Well, you can go two ways with it. Neither one of these is necessarily better than the other. Uh, it's gonna depend on the situation. It's gonna depend on what else you have written. But one, a really easy one, is just to add whatever is missing. So if we go back to our example about the mall, we could say something like this. I bought them at the mall. See, by adding the subject, I, and a verb, bought, uh, we've created a complete sentence. Uh, the other option, option number two, is that you can combine your fragment with a complete sentence nearby. Now this isn't always going to work. It'd be hard to do with two words like the mall, but it's actually really easy to do with one of the fragments we saw earlier. Because I studied for the biology quiz today, I got an A. So there you go. That's two ways that you can fix a fragment. You can put in what's missing. You can attach that fragment to a complete thought somewhere else nearby. You also got those three diagnostic tools, the stare test, the yes or no question test, and the tag test. I don't know which diagnostic tool is going to be best for you. I don't know which solution to the fragment problem is gonna be best for you. I'm not there with you right now. I mean, this whole internet thing is magic, but it is not that magic. Still, I hope this video gives you some confidence that you can go back into your writing, you can do some proofreading, you can find inappropriate fragments and you can correct them. Before I go, I want to do a quick shout out. Uh, this is a book called Grammar to Get Things Done by Darren Krovitz and Michelle Devereaux. If you are an English teacher, if you are a writing teacher, you need to own this book. This is where I got the idea for the tests. Uh, they're just tremendously helpful 
for me in planning uh, not only these videos, but the writing workshop in my classroom as well. Students, uh, you obviously don't need to buy that book, but you should stick around because in the very next episode, we're going to answer a different question about sentences that is equally important. So, I will see you for the next one. Now, I don't want to skip over the importance of that in con- I gotta do that again because I keep looking at the screen. I'm so handsome.